Okay, so um, we are Ramak, I'm Frick, and um, yeah, we are together with Hayes, we are doing this like, I think short lecture or like brief lecture because we were asked to do uh, some kind of straightforward uh, lecture on our studio. So uh, we will show uh, five uh, build projects. Um, one project that we are preparing to build if we have some, some time left. Um, um, and the reason that we want to show like only build projects is um, because of we um, really have like the, the, the feeling that the act of building is uh, formed like a crucial step in um, the design process that we are making through with our office. Um, and more specific, we're interested in the debate that accompanies the, this building phase. Um, and if we talk about debate or think about debate, it's really the conversation that um, sometimes evokes uh, a moment that um, can result in uh, some subtle deviations within our architecture. So, um, as architects, we try to react on these moments um, resulting from uh, this debate uh, between contractors, clients, neighbors, uh, users, also us. And um, we have to be honest about this. This debate is mostly about budget, sometimes politics, but in essence, it's quite banal. Um, but we see these moments as opportunities uh, in which a project can evolve in a way that uh, was maybe never foreseen and um, maybe also we could never have uh, designed it ourselves. So it's an attitude that uh, within our practice, we think can result in some kind of empathic architecture where uh, the authorship is not clear and it's for sure not only as an as a, as a author. Um, so we want to build structures that can be claimed by its users. And we believe that this building phase, uh, this debate is a crucial part of this process where people can uh, claim the space or can uh, occupy um, the architecture. Um, a first project we want to show is the first project also we did as Ramerk uh, when we just graduated. Um, it's a workshop in a house um, in Marekerk in near Ghent. It's a workshop for a sculpture for Klaar, who was the client then, and she wanted to combine uh, working and living uh, on the same plot. And she found uh, a plot um, over here in Marekerk. It's very close to Ghent. Um, and it is a corner plot on a yeah, quite typical Belgian uh, suburban area. So you have a lot of freestanding houses. You also have this um, nature reserve nearby there. So there are some qualities and on the opposite of the street, we have um, the other side of the street, we have a castle garden, which is yet not public, but there are, like I said, some qualities um, on this plot. Um, and yeah, for, for the project, we try to reverse the idea of the, uh, yeah, this is quite a big uh, concept, but they try to reverse the idea of the classical ornament into uh, a structural concept. So um, where the Greek architecture translated wooden details into stone ornaments, we wanted to translate these tournament, stone ornaments again into uh, some simple and uh, contemporary building uh, details. So still referring to this uh, human scale. And this results in a facade uh, where this classical proportion we were looking for is quite direct maybe, and also very clear. Um, but this facade is only the result of one uh, principal construction detail. It's about uh, this stacking of stone and wood clearly referring to the uh, primitive hut. So we have masonry, concrete beams, and wooden beams on top. And uh, we oversized this, uh, these beams. So these oversized beams are making the ornament that we're looking for in the facade, but they're mainly there for uh, light and space. So this is a picture during construction site where the light was like, it was the first time I think the light was entering the space in this uh, very indirect way, which was mainly functional, is mainly functional. So 
there couldn't be direct sunlight uh, for the workshop. Um, but the light is also making these spaces, it's making uh, rooms, rooms without physical borders and without uh, a specific program. The program is divided, so we have this house and we have the workshop, and we also divided uh, this, this program in two separate volumes, um, and we shifted them on the uh, outer corners of the plot. It's a corner plot, so maybe it's important to say, you cannot see it here, but we have like a very busy road uh, on this side, and we have a more quiet, calm road this side. Um, and both volumes have uh, different proportions according to program, but also according to uh, context, um, acoustics, orientation, and so on. But they speak the same formal language. So this, this uh, principal detail is, is used both in both volumes. And we have like the double high volume, which is the house, and the lower volume, which is the workshop. It's, the workshop is also like an acoustical buffer for the busy road and is because of its height, it's also allowing the light or the sunlight to enter to the space in between. So the space in between is uh, an outer space formed by these buildings, but also formed by these uh, two freestanding walls over here. And the walls are working as a, uh, a decor or a screen in the public domain. And for us, it was much about this disconnection. So the walls, these walls are not connected with the the volumes and also it's about uh, the height of the wall. So the wall is high enough to gain uh, the intimacy that was wished for in the garden. It is also low enough to uh, allow the surrounding or the context to be involved in the plot and, and, and the other way around. So um, the specific uh, position of uh, different elements is resulting in uh, a microclimate and a set of atmospheres which are strongly related to uh, the surrounding and functional program of the house and the workshop. So we have um, what you see here is a, a sculpture garden but we also have an outdoor workshop. We have a stock for stones. We have, what you see here, we have a herb garden related to the kitchen uh, and so on. And if we go to the plan, so we have the house and the workshop and both plans are about shifting a structural core from the center. This is like twice the case. So we have this in the atelier or in the workshop and we have this in the house. And by doing this, we create uh, four rooms per volume, rooms with each like a different scale, different light and a different relation to its context. And there's also no circulation in the plant, so not in the workshop and not in the house. So the rooms are defined by, by the light, like I just said, and also the shortest span from the facade to the structural core. Um, and in a way the user has to deal with this space. So um, the rooms are not determined and we feel that the architecture for that reason can be uh, claimed or can be occupied. And we have this uh, some kind of anecdote that Claire, the client, told us just before we delivered the building that she really liked the space, but she didn't know how to, to use it. And it was something new for us because we never thought about this this way, to be honest. But uh, it's like uh, we took this with us in other projects, I think. Um, and we have some, some pictures for the, the house which is built following the same principles. But of course, we have a more classical interpretation here. By the position of the core, we create uh, a hall, um, a kitchen, of course, a living spaces, and so forth. If you enter the first floor, so the, this is the first floor, you enter it via this uh, structural core, the central core, and you enter the, um, the drawing room. And from there out, you can reach like a bedroom, guest room, bathroom. And again, you see there is no circulation. So the residents uh, move uh, or circulate from room to room via the outer facade of the volume. 
and whether the workshop is built quite direct, also quite robust. The drawing room and the house in general is more specific, much more tactile also. So we have a, we have a soft uh, pine floor here, uh, which allows the artist to work on the ground, to make drawings on the ground. And uh, for example, the plaster walls contain white marble in order to reflect the light more, even more than, than already was. And also very important, the ceiling here is very low, so everyone can touch it. So uh, the atmosphere is uh, within the same elements that we used for the workshop is quite different uh, in the house. It's an image of the guest room. This is the structural core or like the, the, the staircase also. It's much more sculptural and maybe it's uh, almost atypical for the house. And uh, if we look at the facades, they are directly the result of the plan and this principal detail. And um, in a way, we had almost no aesthetical choices to make. Um, we only had to choose like the material and we chose this, or we chose this brick, and which is a a recuperated stone from a, a site uh, nearby that we quit, quit by, and the client quit by. And because of the broken stones, a lot of broken stones, we proposed to work with this uh, pronounced joints in a, with a white mortar um, that could, that catches the light in a, in a very nice way. So this, these facades are changing during the day. Uh, like you see, and this is like a picture of like the the garden and the different atmospheres that we were uh, having over there. Okay, um, please tell me if I, if I don't speak to uh, enough loud. But um, next project um, is uh, called Car Wash. It's also uh, located in Ghent, but in a totally different uh, uh, environment somehow. It's uh, located uh, near the 19th century city belt in the former butcher's district uh, with a lot of warehouses. Um, maybe, Free, can you do the next uh, slide? So it's uh, quite a very hard uh, environment with um, the, the city ring nearby, so there's a lot of noise. Um, and, and the project is called Car Wash because the existing building was used as a drive-in hand car wash without uh, any natural daylight uh, on, an, on a very, very introvert plot uh, located in the center of a building block, only connected to the neighborhood by these two uh, passages. So uh, a passage where the, the cars drive in and another passage where they come, come out clean. And this was the environment um, um, that we had to transform into uh, a family house with two guest rooms. And, and, and this building was in a very bad shape, um, as you can see, and we also had a pigeon problem. But on the other hand, there were some very interesting features like um, this rough concrete ceiling, these old masonry walls um, that we want to incorporate in the building um, and also this kind of industrial atmosphere uh, which we liked and, and want to keep visible in, in, in the final house. But on the other hand, uh, everything was very closed in. There's no natural daylight, um, so that was something we had to tackle. And we started with the, the plan of the existing structure, really the structural plan, um, where you see in these different colors, there is a kind of a, a mass of different structures in steel, in concrete, and in wood. And, and um, we analyzed this, and at a certain point, we decided to uh, keep only the L-shaped brick volume and to uh, demolish all the wooden roofs because they were in a very bit bad shape. And, and by this, we could provide some air in the plan. So this was uh, after we um, demolished this uh, existing roof. 
and, and it's, it was like an experience for us at the construction site to see this. And then we decided to, to build this new roof, uh, a roof which uh, is not connected to the, to the walls at certain points. So you get these two big gaps as, as kind of uh, enclosed gardens. Um, and and um, these gardens really uh, um, give, give the project some air and some light. So, so this results in this ensemble of lower and, and high volumes and these two gaps um, within the building block, the existing building block. And, and, and we really want to keep this double entrance for the house because it's had some, some advantage that uh, we can use it for the, the guest rooms. So we had this double access as a private access for the, the, the owners of the house and there is a, another access for uh, the guest rooms. So this is a, a view from the street. So everything is basically behind this garage boxes. There is only this black um, gate uh, which you enter and then we, um, um, we put a new volume on top of this existing volume of the guest rooms, but we build it in the same masonry as an almost invisible addition uh, on the street side. And then uh, we implemented a kind of a recessed facade, uh, which provides some privacy for uh, the two uh, guest rooms to have some uh, small terraces. And when you enter the building, you get this kind of sequence of uh, different spatial experiences. Uh, the first space you, you, uh, you enter through the gate is kind of an outdoor paved uh, environment, double high with this black spiral staircase leading to the guest room, which you see a picture from on the right side. And you also get a glimpse of the enclosed garden from the streets through this gate. Um, and then you're attracted to this garden and you enter this garden. And in this garden, um, it's, it really functions in a way as a kind of an, um, an entrance uh, space for all the living spaces. The living spaces are organized around this garden in a kind of a loop. And through this garden, you can enter, for example, um, uh, with a sliding door, or a double high kitchen, which contains the, the existing rough concrete ceiling and is strongly uh, interfering also with the living room. And then um, a thing we did on the ground level, we had the structure of the existing concrete, which was not uh, at even level at all. Uh, we had the idea to do um, the walls in masonry, but it had, it had, had a problem with it because uh, it was not an even level at the ceiling. So we implemented this line, uh, kind of a plant line um, for the, the masonry and everything above is in this uh, more um, slick uh, rendering uh, to deal with this um, uneven leveling. And then um, a picture from the living space um, where you have this new wooden roof, uh, which seemingly bal balancing it with, uh, on one single beam and one column. So we have this one column, one beam, and then a very small, narrow patio uh, providing some light and is raised on the same level as this concrete bench. So you have this relation between the living room and this uh, very narrow uh, patio. And last picture uh, of the project is, is a view from the second entrance, uh, a totally different entrance, a very narrow dark space um, where this, at the end of this, this hallway, you get this uh, opening up to this unexpected, very bright living space uh, inside um, the building block, which is kind of an Alice in Wonderland experience, uh, we think. Um, okay. Another project is a uh, Wolterslaan build project. It's um, maybe a typical uh, first commission. 
Right. Early commission for uh, young architects is a refurbishment of the row house in uh, Ghent, it's like in the 19th century belt of Ghent, so just outside the center. And um, the existing volume or existing house is a former uh, doctor's house with uh, practice room, uh, big living space, but all without much light or um, almost no direct uh, contact with the garden, garden which is also north orientated. So um, we had some uh, uh, issues about this. And um, if we combine this with um, the simple yet complex program of, yeah, it was a program was a family house for five people. Um, we wanted to make a house that could deal with um, the everyday complexity, if we can call it like that, uh, the complexity of a modern family. So um, if we combine this with the urge to restore the contact with this north oriented uh, garden, we came to the clients with this um, yeah, exotic reference. And we didn't want to use this uh, literally, of course, um, but it's about the idea of uh, a garden which is as important as the house itself. So a house as a garden or a garden as a house. So um, we were searching on uh, some kind of pavilion-like structure that was mediating between uh, the north oriented garden and then the existing volume of the house. So we wanted to use a pavilion as, um, as some kind of strategy to generate space and distance for a family of five people without uh, really closing off. And this was uh, how we translated this reference uh, within the framework of this uh, row house condition. Um, so we proposed a sequence of uh, different uh, smaller rooms and they're all disconnected also by a new outdoor space that we uh, uh, suggested. So it's resulting in an enflenade of spaces responding to um, this complexity uh, of the family, maybe. Um, and for that, rooms are disconnected, but there is always like an indirect link, uh, which is sometimes uh, auditive, sometimes it's a visual link by a vis a vis connection. It can also be like a, a smell or something like this. Um, and maybe this is the answer that we proposed um, that could deal with the social interactions. Um, so we didn't propose like one big living space, um, but instead we proposed a set of connected rooms, connected spots where the family members have this uh, gradation in uh, privacy. And this, these are two pictures of uh, the kitchen as the heart of the house from where this enflenade is uh, starting. Um, and maybe important, we, we, you see like this is a view, direct view to the new room or the pavilion that we built. And this is then uh, this vis-a-vis -vis connection that I was talking about. And um, we disconnected this volume of this pavilion from the party wall or the common wall, um, which restores the contact with this garden and at the back, but also provides light and speciality for the house and especially for uh, this pavilion. And this is the view from the other side then. Um, it's a living space that in a way is acting as a small pavilion in between uh, this garden and then the new patio that we, um, that we have there. And important is the room uh, is one step lower in relation to the, to the house. And this is maybe to have a clear division between both volumes, but it's also uh, some kind of mental step. Um, but on the other hand, it's also gaining like a more direct relation with the garden. Um, and, and because of we, we, we are having like this north oriented uh, facade, we, we also could have like um, a curtain wall uh, that is making the whole perimeter of this new addition. So we can have like a, 
fully uh, glazed facades. So if we have, go to the plan, it's uh, in a way a classical layout. So we have the, the hallway, the entrance is in the street, and you enter uh, directly in the kitchen. Uh, this is the central kitchen from where uh, these uh, different living rooms or smaller different rooms are existing. We have a more intimate living room facing the street. And it's like uh, there's some distance in between, which is made by a very narrow cabinet. We have the new uh, room, which is the pavilion, also uh, like extended with a smaller space that is uh, unprogrammed. So you cannot have a table over there. It was a discussion we had with the client, but uh, it's not the idea to, to, have, to make like a dinner uh, uh, table over there, so it's, it's some kind of veranda condition that we, we wanted to achieve over there. Um, so it, these spaces don't have a clear function. So this disconnection is uh, in this, what we call space in between, and this space in between here exists both in the interior and also in the uh, exterior, exterior. And this uh, Ensemble of or enflenade of different rooms is also existing in the in the uh, section. We uh, have this void that we uh, suggested. We have this new vide towards uh, an office space, which um, connects like this office space with the kitchen, but is also offering like new views or new uh, relationships with uh, the pavilion structure in the back. And the kitchen is the heart of the house, some kind of the control room of the house and the different connections that are made over there. So you, here you can go this more intimate living space uh, facing the street. You have the void towards the uh, office space, uh, the patio and so on. And when we when we want to build it, we this reference was like um, yeah important in, in, in our way of thinking, and we really like this uh, direct way of building. Of course, this is Smithson's, um, um, where this stone wall, this existing wall, is is used as a as a stone plinth, where this wooden structure is added afterwards, and uh, it's a very fragile wooden structure. Um, or we interpreted it like that, and especially like covering it up with like uh, metal cladding afterwards, just to protect it for for rain and, and, and wind. We thought this was a very nice uh, way of building uh, some this kind of structures. So we we tried to use the same uh, strategy. Um, we have the stone plinth that also is making a chimney. Chimney is there also for like. Uh, um, constructing or uh, stability reasons. Um, and on top, we have this wooden uh, structure. So we have wooden columns, wooden beams. And these wooden beams is like the, the rhythm is really defined by uh, the maximum span we could have. So in a way, um, the facade is also defined by uh, or designed by uh, the structural engineer. and. Um, we did the same as the Smithsons. We just covered it with some metal cladding and uh, that's more or less like the construction. And this is how we build it. Um, more or less like a piece of furniture. It's, uh, everything is like in very soft wood, built in very soft wood. And um, also we don't have fancy details for this. We uh, really pushed like the glass against the wood. So we made some joints and the glass is like uh, fixed with uh, some aluminum uh, profiles against this wood, um, which makes this kind of uh, interior views. But you can see here, you can see the these profiles, this cladding, um, which is um, in contrast to the uh, very soft interior, of course, also a very tactile interior. But what is nice is that the light is uh, reflecting uh, by this um, by the aluminum uh, profiles to the inside. And during the evening, it's like the opposite and the, the pavilion is becoming a lantern in the garden. 
in the space in between. So this disconnection between uh, the new volume and the existing wall, like you see here. And we also wanted to like preserve the, the old uh, signs or like scars from what was there before. You see like the tiles from the kitchen and so on. I think this alley is, is 80 centimeters wide. So it's, um, this connection is, is very subtle and in a way also it's a more a mental connection than a really direct connection with this uh, garden in the back. Our next project is a, a project that uh, we did to together with uh, Van Gelder Stelleman architect. A project which involves uh, the conversion of two buildings into a support home uh, for people uh, which are recovering from cancer treatments. Um, the site of the, the, the location uh, is, is in the center of Ghent, near two uh, small triangular spaces, squares, which gives the building some, some, some air, some space in front of it, and which allows you to see the building from a certain distance. Um, and then we have the picture of the existing building, um, which is a city house with an old Renaissance uh, core inside of it. And next to it, there's a, a, um, um, a corner house, which we decided to demolish and replace by a new building, uh, which we want to connect with the existing uh, historic house um, and used to uh, give all the contemporary comfort to the to whole. Uh, so we have this sheen with the historic townhouse, which was completely renovated and linked to a new volume. The new volume, in fact, can be seen as a kind of a mirror image of the existing house. Uh, a typical manor house has a series of interconnected rooms linked to the serving parts in the center. So you get this repetition of the same rooms, both in the historic building, but also in the new part we designed. Uh, as, a, as a typical fl floor plan, let's say. And, and this results in the, in the facades um, in which we, we uh, wanted um, to use the, the prefab concrete language as a known architectural language for the new part and, and, and have this dialogue, dialogue between the, the new part and the old part uh, of the building uh, with the historic facade. And this is kind of a conceptual model, um, more about the, the way of building this kind of uh, prefab concrete uh, as a kind of constructive logic of, of simple stacking of, of rough stone elements with these visible joints, uh, almost like giant megaliths uh, on top of each other. And this results in, in this kind of uh, construction site image as a typical floor plan, uh, an alfiad of rooms, of similar rooms, uh, interconnected rooms, which provides kind of a gradient uh, of different social interactions between people, which is important for the program because some people want to read a book uh, on their own and other people want to meet uh, with each other. So you have to make this kind of uh, graduations in the plan. Another thing we had to, um, yeah, what, which was important on the site was this small alley on the side of the building, um, which was an important shortcut for the neighborhood. And the new building uh, in a way engages with, with this alley uh, by a series of, of small um, corners, little corners, um, because the, the plot was not straight on this alley. So we decided to do this by these corners. And, and these corners give some kind of an, uh, a human scale to this, to this very large facade in a way. So we get this, this gap, this gaps in between, which, which makes a division in this, in this facade. Another thing we did was to, uh, although it's a very small uh, alley, we decided to, to, to put some big windows um, to, to give some, uh, yeah, some social control in the alley. Uh, and apart from these big windows, there's also a very small window, um, which, which works as a, a kind of a marker to 
uh, an entrance, a passageway, uh, a passageway which 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 uh, makes an entrance to the to an enclosed garden in in the building block itself. So here you have this gap in the wall, and then you enter it, and when you enter it, you um, come in this uh, enclosed garden. Um, in this enclosed garden, the, the old part and the new part of the building are, are interfering with each other through this new big window, um, which is turning around uh, the corner, uh, in a way. So very fast, maybe the, the floor plans, which was interesting to this plot was that there were actually three entrances to, to, uh, to have access to the building. So you really had the opportunity to um, to have this very strong um, relation with the environment um, and, and have this very strong connection on each side of the, of, the, of the neighborhood. On the ground floor, there's a very big space, which is a yoga room. Uh, when you enter the building, uh, you have a small uh, coffee place where you can drink coffee. And then you go upstairs for a workshop or you go uh, to the yoga class uh, or you go sit outside and read a book in the garden. So the first and second floor uh, contain more the, the living areas and the therapy spaces for the care home. And uh, on the upper floor, we also um, had to make a uh, concierge apartment. Some photos of the belt project. So this is the, the biggest space of the project, the, the yoga space. Uh, in which we provide this this um, this uh, very large uh, folding wall, which can be completely open in summer, so uh, it becomes a part of the of the garden uh, in a certain way. And here you see uh, this this principle of this um, other rooms, uh, which can also be um, closed off when needed with with large uh, sliding doors. And, and a picture of the existing fabric uh, with the historic elements. Um, and we find it interesting to, at certain points, we, we uh, did some interventions which are not very clear if they are new or old. So this is like a new arch we, we, we made because there were some existing arches in the building. And we had to make a, uh, this new opening. And we thought it was interesting to, to have this kind of um, unclear uh, relationship between new and old. Um, so every passage between the old part and the new part of the building is marked by this material, this very dark uh, walnut wood veneer. And, and sometimes these passages are very clear as a double folding door, uh, almost as a castle door. In other uh, uh, um, uh, rooms, it's more like a hidden door uh, within uh, this kitchen wall as a, a sort of kind of a secret passage to a, a serving space. So the idea was really to make a, a, an open house uh, in the city center where people can walk in for a, a talk and a drink, very low profile, um, or to follow some specific uh, workshops like this kitchen workshop uh, where you can cook together a healthy meal and, and have, a, have a nice dinner together and share your experiences with uh, the illness. That, that's really the idea of the, uh, to, to really make a house uh, instead of a, a medical facility, a place, a place where you can feel at home uh, in a certain way. An image from the concierge apartment, with, which is a, in fact a duplex. And then during construction, we had a feeling that um, there was something with the proportions of the, the facades. And we thought it lacked some, some height in a certain way. But we had some, some building constraints. Um, so it was not possible to, to put an extra uh, volume on top. So we decided to make this very elegant, very refined pergola structure, which can be uh, overgrown by time. And it's kind of a counterpart to the, the very massive concrete elements uh, of the lower floors. Another view from the alley. And from the, the square. 
in front of the building. Thank you. Um, youth Center in Lichtervelde is uh, first competition with it. Um, Lichtervelde is maybe um, the archetype of a Flemish, vill Flemish village. Um, so uh, we have the city center and the village center. We have a very big church. Um, we have some kind of square, market square. We have some bars, some shops. We have the um, city hall over here and the white spot is our plot. And it's a corner plot. It's uh, quite similar to uh, Mariakerke maybe. We also designed this in the same uh, or during construction site. Um, and the plot is really on the border between the residential suburb, uh, which is here, and uh, the more public part of Lichtervelde. And the brief was uh, a multi purpose hall with a flexible partition wall in the middle in order to gain flexibility. And um, we uh, questioned this during a um, competition and um, we proposed in order to get even more flexibility than they wanted, we proposed to divide this program into smaller rooms. Um, so each room is, uh, again, it's very simple, it's rectangular, um, but has its own height and proportion according to uh, the program that we made. And we connected this room internally and shifted it on the plot forming two uh, courtyards. Uh, some reference that we want to share is, uh, the first is um, the Uma Long House uh, in Borneo. Uh, it's the community house also. Um, the community house uh, existing from a range of three, four, five rooms, um, depending on the scale of the village. And what is interesting is it's built uh, within the same formal language as the surrounding houses, um, which are vernacular, of course, but um, what is interesting about this is it's only the scale is different. So in a way, this uh, community house is, is becoming an abstraction or uh, a summary of its context. And um, the second reference is Caccia Dominioni, of course. And um, first, it's not really about this project, but it's about the evidence of uh, the interior. So the banal complexity that can be found in, uh, in in a relationship within a house. So we are very much interested in the simple connections between different rooms, different living rooms. Um, and those two references are really like the, this kind of thinking and um, that we want to, to, to work on. If, can we design a public building um, as an overscaled house? And um, so, we wanted an ensemble of connected rooms, referring to this house, and uh, but we wanted rooms with clear functions. And um, yeah, more or less like a kitchen is related to a dining room, the bar should be connected to the main hall and so forth. So we wanted this kind of flexibility. And um, we called it then some kind of banal uh, complexity that we were looking for. And we tested this complexity within uh, some voids, some vis-a-vis -vis connections, uh, interior sides, interior windows, and so on. And these elements allowed us to work with this very simple uh, and humble rooms. And this is um, a picture from the build situation. This is from the foyer where you can see this vis-a-vis -vis situation. Also these voids, so there's a lot happening uh, on this small space, on this small space and um, the other way around. And um, the volumes were are shifted on the plot and um, because of that, it's resulting in two courtyards. So we have a first courtyard that is uh, clearly public. Um, this is like the, the, the city uh, center. So we have uh, those two streets and it's clearly public. And um, again, here, similar to what we did in Marikerke, we, uh, we build a wall, we want to build a wall over there. And, this wall is working very similar as a screen, as a decor inside uh, the public domain. 
And we have a second um, courtyard, which is much more intimate and uh, works as a garden for the youth center, but also uh, for like the, some illegal cottages beside the pot. And the specific height and scale of the singular volumes was resulting in a cascade on the site, um, according to the context, of course, but um, what we thought is very important is that uh, this new program is becoming visible uh, or readable within this ensemble, which makes this uh, when it's built. And um, so we have this cascade, but what is interests us the most maybe is this wall. So this wall is really working as a screen in the public domain. And we, we gave like this wall the same dimensions as we used in Maria Kerke. And uh, so it could be like really a mindset in two directions. Uh, so like the context can be evolved, but also the other way around. And in this wall should make it possible for the user, like the young people of Richterfelde to to claim the space to to occupy this this building. So some pictures of the public courtyard, which is in a way interiorized by the fireplace, um, a chimney that works as a totem, like the center of the built and the unbuilt space uh, on the plot. So. If we go to the plan, we have these simple uh, rooms that are internally connected, but it's also much about these exterior rooms, like I just mentioned, and we wanted to treat the interior and the exterior as equal. So these courtyards are working as uh, empty chambers for the youth center and are gaining the flexibility uh, the client asked for. So each room can be used separately and is uh, reachable from the outside, but they also can use can be used like uh, together, of course. Um, we have a foyer. This is like the entrance space and it's also connecting the bar with the main hall. And we have some spaces around that was, are like uh, indirectly connected with those spaces. We have, uh, this is a crea room, this is like connected to the, to the bar. We have a meeting room uh, and so on. And because of, a very strict budget for the project. Uh, we decided to work with uh, maybe the cheapest brick we could find. Uh, it's a Plugster, it's uh, a brick from a, from a site nearby. Um, and we wanted to use this brick as the main element for the building. So both for the interior as the exterior. Um, these are very standard stones, but in order to gain this abstraction that we were aiming for, or like this serene banality in a way, we had to draw every stone, um, which is of course uh, a contradiction. And we worked with a local contractor and we communicated uh, in this way, in a very direct way with him. And we made this kind of schemes here that showed him all the exceptions. We also did this for the interior. And it asked a lot of effort from the uh, contractor because um, we didn't know in advance, but yeah, it seems that of course these stones are not uh, used in the facade or should not be used in the facade. And because of that, there were no aesthetical references for the stones. Uh, so we had stones that like the colors changed a lot. Also the measurements uh, could change from parcel to parcel uh, and depending on the clay that was used or like the position in the oven. So um, the contractor had, contractor had to trade like stones with other uh, building sites and so on. It was a quite a complex um, process, but um, it was resulting in uh, a building that maybe can be like, or is the abstraction of its context, um, which is of course an image. Um, um, let's say that we also like that yeah, the building is blending or merging with its context. And I think it's also because of the clay that is very local. Um, 
and the yeah the confrontation with the with these existing buildings and this is i think the most public part of, of the site of the plot and uh, from the beginning we decided to build almost nothing over there just to underline this public uh, part instead of building like a, a higher volume um, this confrontation again with the neighbors and these are like the illegal cottages that are beside the plot. And this is how it looks like today or like one month ago. So this garden is really growing fast. And it's also again connected to the main hall. Um, so, and in this interior, we um, we have this white paint that maybe is like the one purely aesthetical choice that we made. It's there for the daylight, of course, but it's also there for adding a new proportion uh, in the building. And some of these uh, interior sites and interior windows also that are making the complexity, which allows us to work with this very simple um, architectural uh, volumes. And the complexity uh, that we were looking for is really becoming visible in the foyer space, which is more or less the, the negative space for the main rooms. So all the exceptions that we needed to make during construction site are visible there. Um, but because of the white paint, it's in a way very subtle, but it's still visible. So we have stones that are like 19 centimeters wide. We have stones that are nine, 14, also the height is changing and everything is visible within this uh, negative space the foyer of the of the building and some pictures of the building in use this was really the first day that they used the building and um, it was claimed quite fast so we were uh, very happy with this uh, so this was during the day and by night this this building is changing and then uh, again, this wall is, shows it's another kind of ability, the ability to, to hide what is happening over there. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if you have time, uh, maybe. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, we, we can run overrun a little bit. Okay, I will do it uh, like a quick introduction of this project. Um, so next project is done on, it's a collective housing for people with uh, various mental limitations. And the project is located near Ostend, uh, near a very small uh, village. Um, but there is not, um, the plot is kind of an enclave. There's not much connections with uh, the, the village center. Um, and, and it's not visible from the street in a way. And, and apart from that, um, yeah, the plot is uh, we want to to uh, to implement a kind of a, a set of small footways to connect the sites from all sides. This is a reference image from right, um, which shows the ambition from uh, that we have to 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 aim for housing quality as such, uh, away from the typical care institutes, but uh, really focus on this um, condition of collective housing with a high living quality. Uh, instead of uh, making an institute. The isometric view um, from the two buildings, the two houses on the on the plots, a very specific, difficult plots, uh, trapezium shaped, um, in which we um, the, the footprint of the two buildings is formed in a way by uh, this public pathway, which is bending or meandering through the buildings. And, and this more um, enclosed gardens um, embraced by the buildings. Uh, and the buildings are really shaped in this form uh, by these two uh, parameters in a way. And this results in two different, uh, very different facades, uh, much more closed off facades on the public pathway and an open facade uh, to the, the introvert garden uh, where the they have their uh, their own uh, more 
intimates uh, Gordon, let's say. And the section was very important for us in this, in this uh, design process. Um, it has a double pitched roof, which is going from, from very high to very low. Uh, and that way providing some intimacy and, and very uh, much um, yeah, variation in daylight. Indirect light, uh, you get this kind of inclined guided view towards the garden. And another thing which was important was this kind of um, idea of living apart together. So you get this uh, collective feeling of the night parts of the building, uh, which are open to the, the ground floor, um, which was an important uh, theme we want to take with us. This is a view from the park, uh, the public pathway, um, where you see in the back this more uh, embraced and closed garden for the uh, people who live there. Um, yeah, maybe another uh, view from the meandering paths between the two buildings. So you get this totally different facades, uh, double high on this side with uh, the night spaces and on the other side, much more enclosed. And in the plan, this scheme is uh, kind of the, the concept of the plan. Uh, we didn't want to make one big living room, but we want to make a set of, of interconnected living spaces, um, which provides this idea of living apart together, where you can uh, sit apart for a, to read a book, but also meet other people. And this kind of a very uh, fluid um, uh, social interactions. And this is translated into this concrete plan where you have this uh, more functional spaces and the uh, living spaces in between, meandering with outdoor spaces, uh, uh, fragmented uh, uh, living space in a certain way. And then on the first floor, um, yeah, this is more a zoom of the existing. But on the first floor, you have this uh, very rigid uh, repetition of the, the bedrooms, um, but they're all uh, very direct connected to the, the ground floor, let's say. And you can see that over here. So in fact, when you open the door of your bedroom, you're uh, already in, inside uh, the living space. So you can hear people, uh, you can smell the coffee um, in the kitchen. Uh, that's really the idea to have like uh, kind of a big house for this um, collective group of, of people uh, living there. So another view, the hallway, uh, and very uh, archetype of a, a bathroom that we want to make for the, the clients. And then this, this uh, very, um, let's say, controlled way of, of dealing with the outside, which was also important for them uh, by means of this kind of a, a porch and this cantilever. So you have this very uh, limited uh, uh, or controlled way of, 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 of uh, dealing with uh, the outside uh, in a way. Thank you. This was it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's, well, if you stop sharing your screen, perhaps, then we, we can see your full size. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have very much time, but if, if people have uh, questions, uh just just let me know and i'll, I'll give you the microphone um i thought it was fantastically beautiful work I mean, it, it, it i was interested when you, you the um the smithson image came up because i'd been uh it had reminded i'd been already thinking about uh, peter smithson's enthusiasm for the the paintings of uh peter de hook and when you were showing these earlier projects um and this sort of interest in a very you know, layered spatial experience, which seems to be a kind of constant quality of your work. Um, this, this idea of looking throughout, in, across indoor spaces to outdoor spaces to indoor spaces and on again. Um, and I, I th that's obviously feels uh, a quality that's very resonant, very redolent of, um, of, of Ghent and more broadly the, the, the Low Countries. But have you found yourselves also working in environments, uh, maybe in 
pieces of city that are, are more recently built where that sort of delicate um, conjunction of interior space and a, and a surrounding territory is harder to cultivate? Did I make, um, is it, how much is the work that you were showing a product of the, the, the very particular kind of environment that you're building in? Have you had been making competition, say, for urban expansions, kind of in new parts of cities where, where it's harder to make this very delicate relationship between interior and exterior space? Yeah, well, the, the projects we show now are uh, clearly the build projects, so they are also like the smaller scale projects for now. Huh? Um, I think we, we're also doing, we, we're doing master plans. We, we, actually, we're, we're working on a master plan with Bartahane in March. It's, uh, so it's, I think, 300 houses or, or studios. So this is a, indeed a, quite a different kind of approach. We cannot, we cannot use this kind, kind of strategies that we used in the Walterland uh, for that kind of master plan, I think. Um, but still there, I think we, we are really thinking about how we can involve this landscape or can, can, can uh, connect. I think we're very much thinking about this kind of spaces in between and uh, he's correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can, we can uh, have them on different scales. So this can be like on the scale of a piece of furniture, but we can also on the scale of a city block, I think. Uh, I think this, this graduation, I think it's also something you implement in a master plan in a way. Um, yeah, in a way, it's easier to have this very concrete uh, given situations uh, where there's a lot of input. Um, that's, that's not yeah, mainly not the case with the master plan, but I think this, this different graduations that we have between social interactions and stuff, that's also something very important, especially for a master plan uh, to, to take in account, I think. Yeah. And Frank, at the, at the very beginning, you were alluding to the, the fact that the work is uh, always a product of a negotiation with uh, the builder, you know, particularly mm -hmm. in around issues of cost, inevitably. Um, but I, I get the feeling that, that all of this work that you showed, however, um, however stringent the budget, um, there's an incredible level of craft, and uh, um, you've, you've managed the construction of these these buildings in a very direct way um are you how would how would how would that sensibility survive on projects of a much bigger scale do you think um that's a hard one but i think but still from the beginning we're working with quite contemporary and standard materials so that's that's one thing so they are the materials we work with are, are like cheap in essence yeah? And um, I think I think Zorhuis is maybe like the same kind of ID, but then on another scale with these concrete uh, elements. Um, I think this is also possible for a warehouse or whatever. I think it's it's within this kind of detailing. But it's for us what I was talking about is really about this negotiation and about this debate and about things that we could not because we can draw here in the office a lot of details but we have to build them and it's uh, within this uh, sometimes very hard discussion that the possibilities of changing like uh, some very small small details or some yeah some 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 uh, materials or whatever uh, depending on how the discussion is going uh, with with the contractor it 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 already uh, led us to some 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 uh, yeah plans that are way better than we could even expect or we couldn't even design before. I think this is what we did there with like Maria Kerka or whatever, or like the houses. We I think it's harder because you have like much bigger context, but buildings that are like um, depending on like apartment buildings that we not did before. Uh, maybe you have to, to think about this or speak about this before you start the construction site, but although there will be like some problems or some, some, some issues that can be this opportunity to do what we did with the other projects. Uh, 